Good day there, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining me today. We're going to have a little discussion today about a new foliage system that I've been working on in Unreal Engine 4. The foliage system we're looking at here generated almost all of the foliage in this scene. Um, so it's done the trees, it's done these vines in the background, it does the shrubs underneath the trees, and it even does rocks. Uh, the only thing in this scene it hasn't done is the grass and the flowers in the background there. Um, the foliage system isn't actually just a foliage system, it's a cluster based system. The reason I developed this is because I ran into the fact that um, asset placement takes a lot of time and in the set dressing workflow I've noticed that one of the really time consuming things is just placing clusters of assets. Whenever you place a tree you need to place the bushes around the tree so I decided it'd be a lot quicker to actually just automate that process where you place one asset and everything else places around it instantly. The main reason I decided to do that was not because I was doing it myself but because I was working with a new person who wasn't very familiar with you know set dressing practices and didn't do the clustering so I had to explain it to him which is fine um, but then I realized that it might probably be a lot easier to just automate the process so you don't have to worry about it at all. That's where this system was born it works surprisingly well uh, we're going to hop into a separate little area where I can show you guys how we go about working with it. So we've got this lovely little area here. We've got a little path going through a small wooded area and we've got all of our trees. Now, um, you're probably noticing a lot of little blue balls. Um, every blue balls is an individual generator of a foliage cluster. Now, uh, any given foliage cluster here can just be adjusted and moved. We can decide, for instance, that this one needs to go over there. And as you can see, it regenerates with every time you move it. Uh, looks a bit weird when you're doing it like this, but it's incredibly helpful. Uh, aside from that, you can decide to simply randomize it through here if you're very happy with the position it has, and then it will randomize it based on the parameters that we've set up here. Now. One of the biggest things that I need to talk about with regards to the system is uh, something that seems a bit confusing at first, which is this hierarchy. This is where the magic happens. For every spawner, you have a foliage spawn, which is an array of different foliage spawner types. Now, um, I'm going to be very particular in my phrasing here. So it might sound a little weird when I want to say something else, but I keep myself from saying it like I did just now. Because we have foliage spawns and we have foliage types. There's a very important distinction there. We have an array of foliage spawns. If we look over here, it is very easy to see. You've got a tree and you've got a bush. If we randomize it, now we've got three bushes and we've got a tree. You can see it always generates one tree and a bunch of bushes around that tree. The tree always stays in more or less the same place as well. That is because we've got two foliage spawn rules in this system. So, um, the topmost level, we have this. What you run into is a whole load of settings. For now, we're not going to worry about it too much. Um, and then this is foliage spawn. And these are the foliage types underneath that foliage spawn. Each foliage type is an array of static meshes that can be used by that spawner. Um, then for that entire array, the min and max scales and the uh, random rotation that can be applied to it. So for instance, on many rock meshes, you can use any kind of rotation. So you can say 180, 180, 180, uh, or you might want it more controlled. So that's why all three are exposed. We've got surface alignment. So we can decide that we in fact want the things aligned to the surface, which of course on a tree we don't want, but on bushes like this, you'll see that we generally have it enabled because it makes it look a lot more organic. And then maximum vertical offset. This is applied when we're placing on sloped surfaces. Um, what it does is, based on how steep the surface is, it moves it down by a fraction of this. 
Uh, so on a 90 degree surface it would do it completely, but on a 45 degree surface it does half. What that means is that you don't have, you know, trees hovering above the surface because instead it will move it down based on slope. Um, we have five static meshes here, which are just these trees. If we go into the other one, this is the other foliage type for this spawner. This is pretty much the exact same, except instead we have dry tree meshes. If we look at the scale and the rotation, they're all the same, and that's pretty much what you control in a single foliage type like that. Now, um, aside from the foliage types, which are basically just the mesh variations and their individual properties, we also have the spawn, which is the top level thing. So for each foliage spawn, we have a min max placement radius. So as you can see, every tree is placed within zero and five centimeters from the radius, uh, from the center of the spawner. The min max amount of assets to place. So for every tree, for every spawner, we place between one and one tree. So in this case, one. The ray offset is a bit more of a technical thing. This system spawns by casting rays in a given direction, depending on the orientation of your spawner. Um, if we were to have a cube right here and we update, you'll see that our tree gets placed on top of the cube. If we don't want that, we can say we want our ray offsets to be 100 instead. And then you'll see that it still gets placed underneath a cube. Generally, it doesn't matter that much, but for little edge cases like things with things above it or you're placing something on the ceiling instead of the ground, uh, it does matter a lot. You can also see here that we have a physical material restriction. Um, imagine we have uh, this path here and we don't want trees to be placed on top of that path. We can decide that we um, only want our assets placed, our trees placed on a given physical material. Um, you can bind that to a landscape by just saying, okay, well, let's go into our landscape and um, say we don't want them placed on dirt so we select the dirt layer info give this a new physical material let's just place that there it doesn't particularly matter where we put it and we don't really need to worry about any of this because um, the only thing we need is the presence of that thing to make sure that our system sees it uh, inclusive means it will only place on physical materials in this array. Exclusive means it will place on any physical material as long as it's not in this array. In this case, we want to place anywhere except on dirt. So we're going to go exclusive and then dirt. Now, if we move it over to here, you'll see it stops spawning there because the tree can't place on top of a path. If we move it back over here, it'll just happily spawn again. We can do the same for the bushes, but right now it's just for demonstration. So you get the idea. Down here, we've got a debug section. Not going to worry about that in this video. Um, we've got our obvious randomize button. We've got recalculate all foliage instances. This is useful in case something bugs for a second. Uh, no, sorry, this is useful in case you just want to regenerate your entire map. Uh, in case something bugs for a second, you can click refresh all uh, and you can, well, you can see that nothing changes when you press this. Um, that is because that's exactly what it's designed to do. What it does is it refreshes everything so far, which in turn means that uh, whenever something glitches for a second, you can just click refresh all. It removes all of the existing instances. So for instance, if you have a tree that for some reason isn't being registered as part of a spawner anymore, so you can't remove it, you just click refresh all, nothing changes except it recalculates every spawner, so it resets, uh, it removes any strays that aren't being referenced by anything anymore. Um, you need it sometimes, it's mainly just there because sometimes it's useful. Remove instances is there because sometimes you want to remove the instance of just one spawner, like that. What it does is, uh, the main reason it's there is because if we were to randomize this and delete the spawner, you can see we still have the tree there. If we control Z, refresh all, what you want to do instead is remove the instance 
and then you can safely delete it. Otherwise, you'll never be able to remove those instances without refreshing the entire thing, which is fine, but this is easier. As you can see, the trees are also done in the exact same system. If we have a look at the spawns here, we have foliage spawn zero, which again is the core asset. It's these three rocks between 0.6 and 0.8 scaling. They don't align to surface. They place between zero and five centimeters away. And then over here, the other one is those exact same rocks, but 0.3 to 0.5 and placed between 150 and 200 centimeters away and one to four are placed, which means if we go and randomize this one, you'll see that you get a significant amount of variation in what kind of rocks you get from this generator, which means we can actually just decide we want to populate an entire area with these rock generators and that'll work just fine because they're all unique. Uh, obviously we don't have a lot of assets for these rocks so they'll still be somewhat recognizable. You can see that these three are all the same mesh because they're right next to each other. Uh, but then you can just decide well let's keep clicking the randomize button on all of them until they look a little less samey. Um, which is way faster process than if you would have a set dresser reiterate on those assets because obviously now we can just click the randomize button instead of having to move all of these rocks manually because these are a solid 20 rocks right here. All of this is embedded into a hierarchical static mesh uh, which means that they are being rendered in instanced mode. Um, saves a significant amount of draw calls and such, it's just an optimization measure. Uh, that is the reason why when you click a foliage piece it selects everything, you can't interact with the single foliage pieces. It is not embedded with the foliage system, I've tried doing so but unfortunately whenever I added something to the foliage system um, UE4 would crash when you selected that and it would not appear in this. Um, there is something going on behind the scenes that I can't interact with but alas this works well enough. Um, so uh, yeah, that's the basic system behind this foliage spawner. Now, um, there is mainly one more interesting thing that I want to show. Uh, well, there's actually two or three. Um, so one thing you might have spotted here is equal distribution. What this means is if we look at, let's reset these spawners to always place three rocks around it and then we have equal distribution on, you can see that they always place at angles on thirds. So one third of the circle, one third of the circle, one third of the circle. If we untick that, they can go anywhere. You'll see that they're way more scattered instead of always being evenly spread. Right now you've got one here, one here, one here. Sometimes you want that unnatural looking result. As a rule of thumb, I found that you want equal distribution on because it looks more natural. That said, you don't want everything on exact percentages of the sphere. So that's where this comes in, equal distribution angle offset. If we put this on 50, you'll see that there is a lot of variation in where things get placed right now, one, two, three one over there, one over there, one over there. Um, what it does, it just adds a random offset uh, on the angle compared to the sphere. So it doesn't change anything about distance. The only thing it changes is on what angles relevant to the radius it's on should this thing be placed. So usually I put that somewhere in the range of 15 uh, because that's small enough to still feel somewhat equal and natural, but it's big enough to stop people from seeing that everything is placed in the exact same spot as the other things. So uh, that works surprisingly well and then some of you might have spotted this little thing down here. Um, the reason we have that is because we're gonna flip our spawner upside down. The rays we have talked about are all done in local space which means that if we do this we uh i might be doing something wrong here right we're not aligning to the surface so in a case like this obviously you do need to align them to the surface because otherwise it will never work
I am doing things very wrong. Let's just reset this rotation for a second so I can see what I'm actually doing. Does it just not want to place on these? Is that it? Okay, well, hold on just a second. <laughs> I'm going to figure this out by myself. Alright, so uh, nevertheless, I have not been entirely able to figure out what was going on there. Um, I think it had to do with the collision for these things, um, so I've now replaced them with cubes. Uh, and I've replaced the rocks with vines. So as you can see, um, depending on this arrow, so how the spawner is oriented, um, it finds a place to spawn them. If we uh, grab these guys, but we uh, move it down, and then we flip it 180 degrees, you can see that it shoots the ray up again. And it's way more eager to actually put it over there. So um, that, together with the alignment, makes it so that any mesh can be placed on any surface in any way you want. So for instance, we'd be able to use the rocks as stalactites or stalagmites, depending on the surface that they're being placed upon. So what that means is you can do pretty much anything with it. If we go down here, pretty much every piece of foliage, aside from the wheat, in this village has been placed using this system. Um, especially in these places, you can really see what that does. Um, and keep in mind that all of these trees here have the exact same spawning system. So whereas usually it would take me as a level designer, you know, a minute per tree, so to speak, to place all those bushes in a way that they actually look nice instead of weird, um, I can now just copy paste. I can literally do, okay, well, I'm happy with that one, so I'm now just going to paste that all over the place, and then, you know, you're done, pretty much. So, instead of minutes, it takes me seconds to populate an area like this. I just need to pick the right spots for the foliage, and other than that, everyone's happy. What you can see now is I'm undoing and the foliage isn't removing because I don't have an undo buffer. If you just refresh all, that problem is immediately solved. Um, I think I have two at the same spot here now, yeah I do. So we click remove instances and then we do that. And then you see that we don't run into the issue where it wants to um, uh, refresh all because otherwise we keep those trays. So anyway, that's a foliage system. Uh, I hope that that sort of covered what I wanted to cover and what you guys wanted to hear about it. Uh, if you've got any other questions, definitely do let me know. Um, it's a very powerful system. It can definitely also be more powerful than I've shown here because this is a low poly simplistic style environment, but I've also used it in more realistic environments and uh, it just works really well. I've used it with more realistic tree bush setups for the podlands, uh, which has worked incredibly well. Um, actually, you know what, I think I'll just switch to that project and show you guys real quick. So uh, hang on a second. Okay, so unfortunately, as it turns out, I can't actually show you guys that. So, um, it's going to have to stick with this. If anybody's interested and wants to know more, just hit me up on Twitter or Discord or anything like that. Um, I'm considering putting this on the marketplace, but because it's a technical asset and I don't really want to deal with the long-term support of a technical asset like this, I'm not entirely sure if I will. Uh, if there's interest in it or you have special interest in the system, just feel free to contact me. Uh, other than that, if you've got any questions, want to see it demoed in a certain way, let me know, and I hope you guys have a great day. Cheers, see you later.